Hello, welcome back. Here is the example that we will use to demonstrate all the capital budgeting methods. So I'm going to encourage you to take a minute to pause the video now and copy down the information or you can print out this particular slide so that you can have all the information with you as we go through the remaining lecture. So the first method we're going to look at is called the net present value method. Um, I want to point out the difference between the MPV function on your calculator and the net present value rule. The MPV function on your calculator is um, designed primarily to compute MPV, so it's not surprising that they have the same um, abbreviation. However, uh, the, text, the decision rule, the net present value rule, has a lot more economic reasons and meanings behind it than just computing the numbers. So for each criteria, we're going to learn, um, learn a few things. First, we understand what the criteria is, the economic meanings and rationale behind that criteria. And then we also want to know what the minimum acceptance criteria is, so that will help us decide whether or not we should accept or reject a project. And then also, you, and this is important for independent projects. And then we are working with mutually exclusive projects, we will need to find a way to rank the projects. So we'll also talk about the ranking criteria. So the definition of the net present value is the total present value of future cash flow minus the initial cost. So let's take a look at what this actually means. So here we have future cash flow. Future cash flow here means that this is cash flow, cash flow starting in year one on. So it's cash flow in year one, year two, year three, and on. Those are what we consider future cash flow. So this first step is identifying this future cash flow, and then we have to compute the present value. So to, in order to compute the present value, we also need the discount rate. So if we have the cash flows and we have the discount rate, then we can compute the present value. Once we know that determines the value of our investment. And then we also need to compare that value to the initial cost. So initial here means that this is the cost in year zero. So initial refers to time zero. And as you can see, if the value that we are creating, if the value you're creating is greater than the cost, we'll have a positive net present value. So we'll accept the project as long as the net present value is greater than or equal to zero. So it seems pretty obvious to accept projects that have a net present value greater than zero because we are generating, we are creating value for the firm. The big question is, well, what happens when net present value is exactly equal to zero? What does that mean? And is that, does that still make the project a valuable project? The answer is yes, because if the pr net present value is exactly equal to zero, your project will still have earned the discount rate, the required return. Remember that the discount rate that we use to compute the net present value represents the opportunity cost. So what that means is if you have a net present value exactly equal to zero and you have a discount rate of say 10%, that means your project, the cost that you invest in the project is generating a 10% return. If you have a project, if you have a net present value greater than zero, that means the project is generating a return that is greater than the discount rate. So this is a this is a very important economic concept, and I encourage you to take a minute, pause it, pause the video, and think through it. That uh, it's a very important that when the net present value is exactly equal to zero, the project and the company is still earning the required return. And that's very, very important because that means that it's a sustainable um, decision rule. The, pro the company that can earn the required return can, um, can continue to operate indefinitely because it's satisfying all the requirement, uh, all the, the required return of its investors. Next, let's compute the net present value for this project. We're going to use the example that you have copied down earlier. So here's the project that we have that you have copied down earlier. And remember that 
The net present value is defined as the total present value of future cash flow minus the initial cost. Since we since future cash flow means cash flow starting from year one on, when we compute the present value of future cash flow, we are taking cash flow from year one, year two, and year three. And we need to compute the present value. We know that the required return is 12%. So 12% is our discount rate. And since the cash flow has different amount, this is an uneven cash flow. The easiest way to do this is to, to treat this as a multiple cash flow. And we can use our calculator to help us solve this problem. So the first thing we want to do is start with cash flow. And then we want to clear the work. So the same as we've done before. The first cash flow we would enter is the cash flow in year zero. And since we are computing the first half of the net present value, so this first part, and we are interested in cash flow starting in year one on, we will not put anything in year zero. So we'll skip that for now. The advance to cash flow in year one, cash flow in year one is $63,120. So we will enter that. We only receive $63,120 one time, so F01 will also be one. Cash flow in year two is $70,800. And we also get that once. And cash flow in year three is $91,080. And we also get that once. So we have entered all the cash flow from year one, two, and three. And we go to MPV. Interest at required return is 12%. So we enter 12, enter. Scroll down and plus compute. So here's our net present value. So the present value of the cash flow for years one, two, and three is $177,627. So we, can, so we just computed the total present value of future cash flow, and that is $177,627.41. Now we want to subtract from it the initial cost. Remember that initial, initial cost is cash flow in year zero. So cash flow in year zero is $165,000. So what this two number tells us is that the cash flow from this project is worth $177,627. And this project costs us $165,000. So if you undertake this project, we'll be able to generate a value in excess of the cost. And the net present value, or the difference between the value and the cost is $12,627.41. The big question is, do we accept or reject this project? Well, since it generates more value than it cost, it sounds like a good investment. And indeed, the answer is yes, we will accept this project. And the reason we will accept this project based on the net present value rule is because the net present value is greater than zero. So net present value of $12,627 is greater than zero. Um, so to fully understand what this number means, um, this is actually a pretty complex number. Um, this, is, this is additional value that the firm is able to create by investing in, in this project. If then the, when the firm invests $165,000 in this project, it generated a 12% return. In addition to that, it created an, an additional $12,627 in value when it undertake this project. Now that you understand the economic reasons behind this project, um, I can show you a faster way to calculate this um, using your calculator. However, be mindful that sometimes it is very useful to, to compute the two values separately, to look at the value of the project versus the cost. Um, once you're used to this type of calculation, you can compute the net present value in one step. 